For a movie to succeed, it can't just be great. It needs to be marketable. For this reason, film posters, trailers, and commercials are designed to appeal to the largest demographic possible. Hoping to make the most dollar possible, though, some studios will even resort to false advertising. Playing the devil's advocate, it's understandable why this happens. After all, producers and studio execs just want their given projects to succeed, make money, and be seen by as many people as possible. But sometimes, when the movie advertised bears no resemblance to the finished product, paying customers have every reason to feel just a little bit cheated sometimes. So I'm Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movies that deceived you into buying a ticket. Number 10, Hercules. It's hard to think of anyone in Hollywood who physically encapsulates the legendary Hercules more than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I mean, look at the guy. As such, it seemed like the wrestling superstar would get his moment to shine after being cast as the lead in 2014's Hercules. And when the trailer showed the titular demigod battling the Lernian Hydra and the three-headed wolf Cerberus, it looked like this adaptation would give fans everything they could want from a Greek mythology movie headed up by the Great One. But it was all a stinking lie. Throughout the film, it's revealed that the majority of Hercules' feats were greatly exaggerated or flat-out untrue. Instead of fighting a Hydra, Herc battled soldiers wearing serpent masks. Rather than taking on a three-headed beast, Hercules fought three single-headed wolves. Save for Hercules' immense strength, there is little evidence he is the son of Zeus as he claims to be. Now, there's nothing wrong with stripping away the mythical side of Hercules if the intention was to tell a more relatable and human story. But if that's the case, why sell the movie as if viewers are going to see the mighty Hercules of legend? It just leaves you feeling cheated. Now, I want to know really quickly what's your favorite Dwayne Johnson movie of all time? Was it Hercules or something else? You let me know in the comment section down below. And don't lie to me. Number 9. The Many Saints of Newark It was a huge surprise when a feature-length prequel to The Sopranos was announced 14 years after the show wrapped. But since the HBO crime drama is among the most celebrated TV dramas of all time, the news was more than welcome. Set in the 1960s, The Many Saints of Newark centers around The Sopranos while they're caught up in a gang war with the DeMeo family. Although it was nice to revisit these iconic characters, a lot of hype was centered around the return of Tony Soprano. Originally played by James Gandolfini, who sadly passed away in 2013. Since the promotions used the tagline, Witness the Making of Tony Soprano, it looked as if this prequel was his story. Considering the character was played by James Gandolfini's son, Michael, it seemed like everyone involved in the project took special measures to do the character justice. But upon watching Many Saints, it was clear this wasn't actually all about Tony. Instead, the central plot follows Tony's cousin-in-law, Dickie Moltisanti. And though Tony does appear throughout, he feels more like a side character in the end. Number 8. The Tree of Life Experimental director Terence Malick is infamous for cutting huge scenes from his work. For example, Adrian Brody's scenes from The Thin Red Line were cut so heavily, he barely made an appearance in the finished product. So unless moviegoers were familiar with Malick's little habit, they probably assumed Sean Penn was playing a big role in The Tree of Life. Not only was Penn regularly featured in the promotions, but he also received second billing in the posters and trailers. However, Penn's talents in this kaleidoscopic drama are gone to waste since he has limited screen time and minimal dialogue. His presence barely feels like a cameo, since the majority of his scenes involve his character moping around without saying anything. Stranger still, the Tree of Life contains more scenes of nebulas, galaxies, and dinosaurs, yep, really, than Penn despite the fact that two-time Oscar winner was being billed as a leading man. Sean Penn's presence feels so superfluous, it's easy to forget he starred in the movie in the first place. Number 7, The Expendables 4. Was anyone really pining? for another Expendables movie. Almost a decade after the last entry in the testosterone-driven saga was released, Sly Stallone and the rest of his fellow action stars set out together for one more ride. Even though expectations were not high, The Expendables 4 was an absolute disaster. Let down by forgettable action, lame jokes, dire performances, and a derivative plot. Not only that, but some of the biggest draws behind the series, the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Antonio Banderas, Harrison Ford, and Wesley Snipes did not return. In their place came 50 Cent and Megan Fox, who felt like poor substitutes. 
But that's not all. Anyone who checked out this pointless sequel just to see the Rocky star kicking ass left the theaters disappointed. Despite being the lead in the last three installments, Stallone's character Barney Ross is seemingly killed early on, leaving his second in command Lee Christmas to fill his shoes. Though Ross returns in the climax, it was fairly jarring to sit through an Expendables movie without the original lead sticking around. To be fair, there's nothing wrong with Lee taking center stage, especially since Statham is among the few actors who are actually trying in this movie. However, viewers had every right to be ticked off by Stallone's absence, especially after he featured in all the promotions. Number 6. The Grey In The Grey, John Ottaway and his co-workers get lost in the Alaskan wilderness after their plane crashes. When the group discovers they're being tracked by a pack of wolves, John does all he can to keep his friends alive. Based on the promotions, many viewers were expecting The Grey to be an action-packed thriller, especially after seeing Neeson whipping butt in Taken. To really sell the idea that The Grey was an action flick, the trailers featured a sequence of Neeson's character charging at the wolves with broken bottles strapped to his knuckles. He looked like a badass. Contrary to what was advertised though, The Grey was not a blockbuster, but a harrowing survival story dealing with grief, futility, and faith. Most of the film involves John's troops running away from the rabid wolves rather than fighting them. Also, the epic showdown that's hinted at in the trailer is never shown. As John readies to take on the pack single-handedly, the scene cuts to black and the credits roll. Even though The Grey is an awesome flick, it's understandable why some may have been annoyed there weren't more scenes of Neeson punching wolves in the face wouldn't you be? Cheers for checking out this video today, and if you're enjoying your fine self, then tap that subscribe button down below. Number 5. Bridge to Terabithia Based on Catherine Peterson's novel of the same name, Bridge to Terabithia tells the story of a young boy called Jesse, whose new friend Leslie introduces him to a world of magic. The film looked like a whimsical coming-of-age story, considering the trailer and posters were teeming with trolls, pixies, and squirrel ogres, aka squogers. Thankfully, Bridge to Terabithia was well received, and is considered a solid adaptation of Peterson's book. However, anyone unfamiliar with the source material found the movie to be drastically different from what they expected. Firstly, there is no secret kingdom, or trolls, or squirrel ogre thingies. Leslie just pretends to go on magical adventures with Jesse to cheer him up after he's maliciously bullied. Sadly, the enchanted creatures that viewers were hoping to see only exist in the kid's imagination. But that's not the only surprise the film has to offer. With zero build-up, Leslie dies off-screen in the third act, leaving things on an astonishingly dark note. Since Bridge to Terabithia was advertised as a popcorn flick for kids, many were horrified to see the story conclude with a child's funeral. Although Bridge to Terabithia is a great film, it's not as magical or as uplifting as many presumed. Number 4. Stealth one of the most frustrating deceptions in Hollywood is when a movie is advertised so it looks like a famous star is playing a larger role than they are. Brian Cranston in the 2014 Godzilla film is a prime example of this devious trick. And then there's Jamie Foxx in Stealth. Although the sci-fi thriller had an impressive cast, Fox was the biggest name hands down. Coming fresh off from his spectacular turn in Michael Mann's Collateral and his Oscar-winning performance in Ray, Fox was expected to be playing a significant part in stealth. Featuring in all of the promotions and standing in the dead center of the posters, it appeared as if Fox was a leading character, which is why it was such a surprise when his character was killed off at the halfway point. So why did the studio pretend Fox was the lead? The simple answer is marketing. Although Stealth was released a year after Ray, Fox shot his scenes prior before he was a big star. After he became an Academy Award winner, the powers that be put Jamie Foxx's face on all the promotions, hoping it would get butts in seats. Number 3. Kangaroo Jack in Kangaroo Jack, a hairstylist and a wannabe musician help the mob deliver $50,000 to Australia, hoping to get out of debt. When the cash is stolen by a passing kangaroo, it leads to all sorts of wacky hijinks. Based on the premise, if it can be called that, it's obvious this buddy comedy is not intended to be high art. But if moviegoers enjoy goofy humor and want to switch their brain off for 90 minutes, Kangaroo Jack should hit the spot. However, a lot of viewers took umbrage with how deceptive the film's 
advertising was. The trailers and TV spots included a memorable sequence of the cheeky marsupial chatting and rapping to the main character. Based on this shot, it was easy to assume the kangaroo would be talking throughout. In reality, the titular character only speaks in just one scene, which is revealed to be a hallucination. If children went to see Kangaroo Jack in the hopes of seeing the hopping critter singing and dancing, they would be disappointed to learn that the bulk of the story involved our two heroes facing off against the Mafia, not watching an entertaining kangaroo rap. What a damn disappointment. Number 2. Mean Girls 2024 20 years after Tina Fey and Mark Waters' Mean Girls hit cinemas, it seemed like the perfect time for the beloved comedy to get a do-over. Although Fey returns as the same character and writer, 2024's Mean Girl wasn't advertised as a straight remake. Instead, the posters and trailers promised there would be a quote-unquote new twist to the story. What is this new twist exactly? Well, despite how the new Mean Girls was sold, it definitely isn't a remake of the 2004 version. Instead, it's an adaptation of the Broadway musical. To make the film more marketable, the promotions fail to mention this crucial detail, or the fact this iteration of Mean Girls was crammed with songs and dance numbers. Weirdly, this isn't the first time this happened. Heck, it's happened a few times recently. The recent adaptation of The Color Purple was also not advertised as a musical. Neither was Paul King's Wonka, which featured Timothy Chalamet in the title role. This recent trend is incredibly frustrating, since there are presumably still plenty of musical fans out there who may have wanted to watch the new Mean Girls had they known it was a musical. I know it would have got me in cinemas quicker. Although the genre isn't everyone's cup of tea, it's not a great business model for studios to encourage potential customers to check out their movies by selling them as something else entirely. Number 1. Pan's Labyrinth For 30 years, Mexican director Guillermo del Toro has wowed audiences with his imaginative work, including Hellboy, The Devil's Backbone, The Shape of Water, and Pinocchio. However, Pan's Labyrinth is still considered to be the Oscar-winning director's crowning achievement. The grim fairy tale was such a sensation at the Cannes Film Festival that it was touted as the must-see film of the year. After every critic under the sun hailed Pan's Labyrinth as a masterpiece, moviegoers flocked to the theatres to check it out. But while watching the first scene, many would have been surprised to learn the entire film was in Spanish. Knowing that foreign language movies struggle to find an audience in the Western world, the studio made sure Pan's Labyrinth's international trailer was devoid of Spanish dialogue. Furthermore, the trailer neglects to mention the story takes place around the time of the Spanish Civil War, just to make sure no one suspected the film didn't contain a word of English. In the studio's defense, this deception definitely paid off, since Pan's Labyrinth was a box office hit, making back quadruple its budget. And by the time this classic was over, did those folks really care about being subtly deceived into watching it? Probably not. 